Hello, uh, sleep apnea is called as obstructive sleep apnea, which uh, essentially involves a, a series of apneas and hypopneas. Now, what is apnea and hypopnea? Apnea essentially is when an individual experiences uh, upper airway uh, collapses and partial blockages during sleep. A collapse uh, will block the airway and cause a pause in your breathing. As a result of this, your oxygen level in the blood uh, will drop considerably. This triggers the brain to deliver a waking response and, and thereby open the airways once again. This is defined as an arousal. Sleep apnea may cause hundreds of arousals per night. The combination of oxygen deficiency and arousals disrupts sleep and impairs the functions of organs and, uh, and hormones. This is what causes you to feel sleepy and unrefreshed on waking up in the morning. It is frequently associated with morning headaches and excessive sleepiness, which impairs your ability to work or to maintain social contact. Sleep apnea is uh, essentially diagnosed uh, through a series of uh, investigations. Uh, the commonest in investigation uh, utilized is called as a respiratory polysomnogram. In this study, we measure oxygen saturation, we measure respiratory effort and snoring. Through a combination of devices attached to your body, uh, including your airways, uh, we are able to determine if you are having apneas and hypopneas uh, during your sleep study. This allows us to quantify the severity of your sleep apnea and thereby determine what treatment would be most appropriate uh, for you. There are more invasive uh, tests available as well, which include a nocturnal polysomnogram, it, there are other studies which include multiple sleep latency tests as well. Both these tests require uh, for you to sleep in a sleep laboratory in the hospital where we can observe you through video cameras to get a detailed understanding of your behavior and your breathing pattern through the night. There are less invasive tests such as oximetry studies, which allow us to simply measure your oxygen levels through the night. This test is, is not very specific, but can indirectly allow us to understand if you have underlying sleep apnea, full stop. There are other tests such as actigraphy, which would help us understand whether you suffer with a condition called as restless legs at night. Overall, these are the basic tests that are available for confirming a diagnosis of sleep-related disorders. There are other tests such as blood tests, which we can also perform to rule out iron deficiency or vitamin deficiencies responsible for your symptoms of fatigue uh, and tiredness uh, during the daytime. We also do other tests such as ECG monitoring if you suffer from symptoms uh, such as irregular heartbeats or fast heartbeats, which indicate uh, palpitations, uh, which you may be experiencing uh, in your sleep. Overall, uh, I do provide a comprehensive uh, list of investigations that would help you confirm your diagnosis of sleep apnea. Sleep apnea, as I have explained in my previous uh, statements, uh, is, a, is essentially a collapse of your uh, upper airway or an obstruction uh, of the uh, upper airway. In the vast majority of the cases, this may be exacerbated by being overweight. There is some evidence to suggest a 20% weight loss can be associated with a 40% chance of the obstructive sleep apnea being cured or being made milder where no other treatment is essentially required. Uh, however, overall, 
because this is uh, due to an anatomical abnormality, the chances of uh, it being completely cured is, is unlikely to be the case. The commonest treatment uh, for sleep apnea that is currently utilized worldwide uh, is called as continuous positive airway pressure. For, uh, this consists of a machine that is kept on your bedside table, uh, which is connected to a, a, a tubing and a tight fitting mask on your face, which covers your nose or nose and mouth and delivers positive airway pressure. This allows the upper airway at the back of your tongue to be stented open that allows or prevents uh, blockages or collapse of the upper airway. This will therefore allow you to breathe uh, appropriately through the night, uh, preventing arousals and thereby giving you good quality sleep. For this treatment to be most effective, you would need to use the machine for a minimum of six hours a night. Additional treatments uh, in the form of a mandibular advancement uh, device, which is more commonly uh, a, a gum shield, can also be trialed uh, in, in some individuals. Uh, the principle uh, in this uh, device is to thrust forward your lower jaw so that the opening of the upper airway is also pulled along with the muscles of your upper jaw. This prevents collapse of the upper airway and therefore indirectly will also provide treatment uh, for this uh, condition. Weight loss will undoubtedly help uh, reduce uh, the stresses on the upper airway and thereby prevent uh, increased collapse. Overall, the gold standard of treatment continues to remain CPAP therapy, although newer treatments in the form of mandibular advancement device is rapidly uh, achieving equal uh, significance uh, in, in the treatment of sleep apnea. There is significant research ongoing uh, in sleep apnea, and, and we expect that in the not so distant future, we will identify other forms of treatment uh, for sleep apnea as well. In addition to the prescribed therapy, you can reduce the symptoms by making lifestyle changes, limiting alcohol consumption, uh, striving to reduce your weight, stop smoking, reduce your consumption of uh, coffee, black tea, or other caffeinated drinks, uh, especially uh, in the evenings or using them in moderation, maintaining fixed sleep times, setting up your bedroom for, for rest. For example, avoid going to bed uh, with the TV and try to maintain a cool temperature in your bedroom uh, environment. Do not use your smartphone or tablets uh, uh, before sleeping, especially in the, in the 60 minutes before your bedtime. What other measures may be helpful in reducing uh, the symptoms uh, would be to initiate a healthy lifestyle whereby you manage to lose uh, some weight. There is some evidence to suggest that if your neck circumference is less than 17 inches, uh, the symptoms of sleep-related uh, breathing disorders would reduce significantly. The long-term risks of untreated sleep apnea include diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, and stroke. We do know that once you develop cardiovascular diseases and stroke, uh, there is a possible uh, negative impact uh, to your lifetime survival. Therefore, treating sleep apnea appropriately early on prevents these uh, complications from developing in the subsequent uh, uh, periods of your life. Therefore, making sure that a appropriate diagnosis and treatment has, uh, that has been instituted uh, would be extremely helpful in preventing any form of long-term uh, complications.